What's up guys, Larry Chan here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. I am in San Jose, California. We recently featured at SEMA a very, very beautiful Datsun Roadster and you guys seem to really like it. I've always really liked them, but I don't know too much about them. So we're out here actually to visit my friends at Z Car Garage. They kind of work on a little bit of everything, not just Z Cars, they work on Skylines, and they also work on Datsun Roasters. So this is one of the ones that they've kind of put, had their hands on. And then we got the owner here, Alvin. So Alvin actually does social media, photography, and all the media stuff for Z Car Garage, correct? That's right. Right? And you're, you are obviously a Datsun guy. Cause I'm a Datsun dork, certified. Do it in a Datsun. All right. So this is actually your personal car. This is mine, yes, sir. So tell me the story behind this thing. So this is a 1967 and a half Datsun Roadster. It's a, a 1600 model. It came in two versions, a 1600 and a 2000. This was originally a 1600, but we did an engine swap on it. So that's why it actually says 2000 here. It still has a 2000 cc motor in it. It actually has a late model 2000 cc engine in it from a Nissan Silvia. It's called the SR20. Couple of Nissan SR20 motors will pull a premium one week before race wars, huh? I'm sure, you guys are familiar with that. So, yeah, the one that I featured last time uh, at SEMA, they're running an SR20 too. So, is that a kind of a really common swap for these cars? It really is. It, it, it kind of makes sense. It's still two liters in displacement, four cylinder, and you'll see them in Datsun 510s, even Z cars, um, but it's pretty common in the, the Roadster chassis as well. Cool, let's check it out. Pop, pop the hood. I like this thing. <laughs> I love this. I love the badge. Is it because everyone asks if it's so, an MG? It's, it's not a dig at MG. Actually, my first car was an MGB. Um, a lot of people mistake these cars for a small British convertible made by MG, the MGB. So I have this sticker here to kind of tell people, look, it's not an MG, it's actually a Datsun. Oh man, this swap is so clean. So this is an NA S14 SR20 DE engine. And okay. this was done a long time ago, about 2002 is when we did this engine swap. So NA S14, so this motor actually never came out in the US. Well, not in this configuration. This is a rear wheel drive variant, but we did get SR20s here and they came in the Nissan Sentra and front wheel drive. Right, and then, but the, I can tell it's the S14 because of the valve cover here. Um, so what did it actually come out of? Like the S14 Qs or? I think they call it the Qs. It's an NA Silvia, not the turbocharged version. The Ks was the turbocharged SR20. And then you imported this motor from Japan. So I didn't personally import it, but a lot of people get their motors from JDM importers. This one came from Oscar at sr20store.com and Rob did the installation. Wow, very cool. All right, so Rob adds the car garage. Uh, you know, the thing is, it actually does, I mean, because the stock motor is pretty underwhelming. I mean, is that kind of the thing why everyone's swapping this in? Even the two liter version, yeah, the L20? Know, it's actually, it's almost the opposite. The, the 1600 and the 2000 original motors are very robust. They're just a little long in tooth, man. You know, it's hard to find parts for them, but the two liter actually made 150 horsepower stock if you got the competition package made great power for the day. Uh, it's just not all about power with this engine. I wanted it for reliability. It's just such a, a go-to car. You get in it, you can go anywhere. It doesn't reek of gas because there's no carburetors anymore. It gets killer gas mileage. It's just turnkey. What kind of gas mileage does it get? Uh, I try hard not to get, you know, 32 miles per gallon. It's hard to get below that. What? Yeah. Well, this is so eco-friendly. So what do you actually use this car for? So this was my dedicated track car and just basically now it's a weekend car. It's just a fun car that I tool around in. That is so awesome. But I it's love been this. To, it's been to every track in the Northern California area, Button Willow, uh, at Laguna Seca, Thunder Hill, Sears Point. Wow, very cool. I love that. It would be really cool to see this on those tracks. It's a, it's a fun car on the track. Tell us about the exterior of the car. How much did you actually have to restore or change or fix? So we actually found this car in Modesto. It belonged to a, a Modesto Roaster Owner Club member. It was in very good shape. I didn't have to do any body work at all. It actually had this paint job. 
It's a, it's a really old school paint lacquer, which they don't actually use anymore. All I did to it was suspension, interior, and, and minor bolt-on stuff. And then, you know, Rob did the engine swap. Wow, okay, so tell us about the suspension. So, my primary thing was what I wanted to do with this car is take it on the track. Yeah. So I just pretty much put every part from the Niz Nissan Motorsports catalog on this car. So it's got Nismo uh, front suspension, uh, Nismo coil springs, Nismo leaf springs, uh, Nismo front sway bar, and that's pretty much all the, the suspension. Uh, I took it on the track and I did a few more upgrades to it and got rid of um, the leaf springs. Now it has a four link rear axle from a first generation Mazda RX-7. Oh, wow, so this is a hybrid. <laughs> it's a hybrid and it's eco-friendly. Tell me about the wheel and tire combo. Yeah. It's actually kind of cool to see this with a 16 inch wheel. It's a 16 by seven Panasport and it's a very common wheel to find on the uh, S30 240Zs. Um, most people think it's kind of too large for a small car like the Roadster, but I, I dig it. If you have enough sidewall like what we have here, this is a, a 225, 45, uh, 16 tire. It looks pretty good in my opinion. I think it sits actually really nice. I mean, it's pretty it, it's pretty low in the front, but like the rear, it's, it seems like it's pretty tucked. That's really, really cool. So, and that's because it's just the natural way uh, how much space there is on these cars or? Space is a, it's a premium on these cars and a seven inch wheel is probably the max width you could fit underneath uh, the rear fender flares. But this actually has a narrowed RX-7 rear end, so we could put a little more meat back there. I love it so much. So tell me about the exhaust. Did you guys have to do something custom? Yeah, it's, it's a custom exhaust for a couple reasons. Um, with the RX-7 rear end and the four links, it's got two parallel bars in it. And now the factory exhaust can't fit through that, that area. So we had to custom fab and exhaust around the lateral links and bring it out to a, a resonator. So it's a full three inch muffler uh, and exhaust from the um, header back. Let's check out the interior. So uh, this is honestly my favorite part of this car. I just can't tell you how much I love this interior. It's so classy and I kind of feel like there's just not many cars with this pizzazz. I, I don't even know how to say it. It's like really, really cool. So you have a, a kind of have a half cage here. Yeah, it's just kind of what we call a street roll bar and it's what I needed to get on the track. And it's also a great place to mount shoulder harnesses. These cars have only had lap belts. Wow. What about the seats? So the seats were reupholstered a long time ago. It's a stock seat, but it's done in this really old school houndstooth pattern. And classy is uh, exactly how I would describe it. I mean, did you have to change any of this? Was this yeah. already pretty good or? So the dash is not a factory dash finish. The factory dash finish is actually like kind of a wrinkle coat black. The previous owner airbrushed this to look like wood, but it's still metal. Huh. And the gauges are all uh, brand new because they had to work with the modern engine. So they're all electronic gauges from classic instruments. Wow, but it actually looks pretty nice. I mean, they're actually like, yeah, it shows the, the gauge series that looked the closest to the factory look. Wow, that is too cool. My favorite part is just these toggle switches right here. And these low windshield models from uh, 1967, they have these really cool toggles in the center here. And that's stock? That's stock, yeah. Wow, I love it. So, and uh, what kind of transmission is this? It's the matching five-speed transmission that goes with the SR. Man, it fits pretty good. It fits nice. I mean, like, all of this, the fit and finish is just so cool. Did, did you have to reupholster any of this stuff? Yeah, those aren't stock panels. So we reupholstered re everything. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, a red interior on a black car. So we had everything done kind of in a similar red color. This is so cool. I love these more simple street builds that kind of have a lot of thought put into it. And then, I mean, the, the fact that you could drive it every day every day if you want to and yep. it's reliable and it gets really good gas mileage and it looks amazing that's super cool so can we go take it for a little ride absolutely yeah. let's do it all right i can't wait man this thing drives really nice i like it a lot i like it too larry <laughs> it's like an old friend, this car. Oh, Seriously. 
Oh, this is so cool. It's uh, it's, it's been probably the most reliable car that come out of that shop. I could drive, I could drive this every day too. Used oh to be my, my daily. This oh, thing is amazing. This truck almost hit me. This is so cool. Yeah, it sounds good too. It I, really does. I like the way it sounds. SRs, yeah. kind of depending on what you have. Right. It sound good, but yeah, I like it. secret that I'm a big Nissan Datsun guy but it, it's, it's cool to see this you know it's cool to drive this that yes yeah, see that throatiness <laughs> I like that you know at low rpm it has that sound that's really cool but on the track man this thing's still blast about this is it it, it kind of reminds me I, I I know you guys are gonna hate me about this but it kind of reminds me of like a, a, a rear-wheel drive type R almost you know like I, a real rear wheel drive like Civic type R I take that as a compliment you know yeah why, why not right of course. like it's and it's super lightweight too how much does this weigh this is 2040 pounds that's it without me yeah wow yeah, so my Z weighs 2150, so it's even right. lighter than that. That's, that's still a light yeah. car. Oh, so cool. Thank you so much for letting me drive your beautiful Pride and Joy. I don't know what, it, Civic Type R Nissan version, but it's rear wheel drive and it's a lot older. I mean, that's kind of the feeling I get from it, you know, especially when it's getting up there in the RPMs, like it's the sound and like the vibrations and the feeling from driving a lightweight NA car. Uh, it's, it's really cool. I love these kind of builds, really. Like, these are like the garage built cars in a way, right? I mean, it's not like a thousand crazy horsepower. It's not like that thing. That thing almost killed me, you know? It's not like a 650 horsepower monster, but it, it's still fun to drive and you can floor it all day. Thanks again for bringing it out. You got it, man. Thank you.